Hey, Nim Sony. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing something completely unusual for me. It's a tutorial series. Yahoo! Anyways, a lot of people have asked me to do some tutorials and I decided I'll, I'll do some now. Let's do it. We're in Unity here. It's a completely blank project. I have got a joystick connected here as well. We're going to be dealing with the keyboard and the joystick. Here you can see I'm using an 8-bit OSF30 Pro. That's a SNES style controller with joysticks as well. So it's a pretty cool controller. Have a look at 8-bit DOS controllers if you like the old classic controller styles because they make some really good reproductions of them. Anyways, um, oh, by the way, this is not a sponsored video or anything. I just like the controllers. Right. So we're going to be going through a bunch of things in this tutorial series. We're going to be going through the basic movement systems that I work with in general. Um, the one thing to mention here I'd expect that you know the basics of Unity and how to use the windows, how to use the what what each of these windows do, what the inspector is, what the assets are. And I'd expect that you already know a bit of how to script as well. We're going to be working in C Sharp. The reason I'm expecting that rather than teaching that because I really don't want to have to go through the basics of scripting. It's kind of boring for me and it would take a very long time. There's just no point. It's a waste of my time because I'd rather get to the actual bulk of making games and in this case, you know, making a tutorial on how to, you know, work with the game logic. Because game logic is what I find fun. So we're going to be dealing with input in this video. Then in the next video, maybe we'll deal with input relative to the camera. Then we'll apply it to the movement of an object. Let's start by looking at the inputs in Unity. So here, if we go to Edit, Project Settings, Input, we can see the axes in Unity. Now you can add more axes just by right clicking and duplicating one of them. Or you can change the amount that we've got already. Um, have a look at one of them now, the horizontal. So the name of the axis is horizontal. That's the name that we can access from code. Over here we have a negative button and a positive button. Left is our negative. Right is our positive. The idea here is when I press left on the keyboard, the value of horizontal is given a negative, negative one. And when I press right on the keyboard, it gives it a positive one. Why are we using numbers like this? Because when we multiply them and we look at the horizontal for a value, a variable, for joysticks, which is here, so you can see a joystick axis here, we can then use the same joystick axis and the same code to access both keyboard and joysticks. So when we move our analog stick to the left, it'll give us a negative number. When we move it to the right, we'll, give, we'll get a positive number. Maximum being minus one or per, uh, plus one. So the idea here is when we press left on the keyboard, where it's exactly the same as us fully pushing right or fully pushing left in this case on the analog stick. So we're going to look at that in code. First, we need an object to apply it to. Let's add a game object, cube. We're going to delete the box collider that Unity automatically adds to it, by the way, because we don't really want to work with physics at the moment. And let's just position it 0, 0, 0. Okay, there we are. Let's press the game and uh, game tab. And we can see here it's in the middle of our screen because our camera is positioned at 0, 0, minus 10. Yours are probably positioned at 0, 1, 0, uh, minus 10. So just change it to 0, 0, minus 10. Okay, we've got an object in the middle of our screen. We've got a blank project and we have a camera looking at that object. Right click in your assets, create, C sharp script, name the script whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to name it test. Now, when you open that file, that's going to open in your script editor. In my case, I've set it so that it opens in Notepad Plus. What I like to do when I start a script, in fact, is actually blank out all of this because I like to do things quite neatly to a certain extent and I like to write things the way I write them. You can do it however you want to. But make sure that you're using the correct function names, especially if you're using update or start or fixed update, which are Unity's own functions. What we're going to use here is the update function. So you type void, update, and then obviously close, open close your brackets because that's your parameters um, brackets anyway. Create your new function here. The update function gets run once every frame in Unity. So we're going to use that. We're going to check for our input. Then we're going to apply it to the, to the cube and that's going to happen once every frame so we can see it real in real time it's going to update. 
let's look at what we can do here. So we're going to apply the motion directly to our transform. So we're going to apply it to our position. So transform dot position. Now when we type transform, that's going to access the transform that is attached to the object that this script is attached to. So we're going to attach this script to the cube and transform will automatically access the transform in, in the inspector of the cube. So when we click on the cube here in Unity, you can see that our position, rotation and sc scale is actually part of our transform. Switch over to the script editor, transform.position equals new vector3 and close that up just so that we I can explain the name vector3. What's a vector? It's a set of numbers. Why do we use a vector3? Because a position has three values here x, y and z. So a vector3 is a three set of values. We can use 0, 0, 0. If we were to set the first one, we'd be setting the x value. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually take our horizontal value and we're going to apply it as the x position of our object. So the way Unity does that, you type input dot get axis and then in your brackets, you use the name that was in the inputs panel. In our case, it's horizontal. Save that and switch over to Unity. Now we want to make sure that is attached to our cube. So grab the test, drag it over. It's now attached to our cube. We can press run. Control P is what I use to press play automatically with using a keyboard shortcut. So you can see here it turns blue. We're playing the game right now. So what would happen if I press left or right on the keyboard, our object's going to move. This is going to be very awkward. It moves smoothly to the left and smoothly to the right. Why is that happening when I'm pressing a keyboard, which is essentially digital? You press left, it's in left. You press right, it's in right. It should be giving our values as 0, minus 1 or plus 1. Yet it's going smoothly. And you can see here up here in the position dialog here, um, in the transform up here, that it's actually moving smoothly across between 0 and minus 1 and 0 and 1. That's a problem with Unity. That's something that I really don't like by default in Unity, is that it sets things up like this. So when you go into your, your input panel here, you can see for the keyboard that we have gravity and we have sensitivity. This is something that pretty much everyone who's new to Unity never ever changes and it's really frustrating and you'll notice it in games where people aren't actually building an acceler acceleration system or any sort of velocity system. They're just using inputs that are smoothly switching between 0 and 1 and it's really frustrating. Change the gravity and the sensitivity to about 999. So they they are at a very high speed where they'll switch from 0 to the expected value almost instantly. What happens now, oh, I don't need to save. What happens now when I play, play it is what I expect it to do. When I press left, click, it jumps to the left. When I press right, click, it jumps to the right. Now, let's grab our game controller and see what happens when I move the analog stick. You can see here that I'm actually accessing the value smoothly because we have full access now to the value on the analog stick. See how I don't have to specifically support a gamepad. Instead, I wrote a single line of code that works for both the keypad, uh, the keyboard and the gamepad. That's the basics of Unity. We now have access to inputs in Unity and we're doing it with an expected result. We know exactly what's going to happen when we press left on the keyboard. We know exactly what's going to happen if we move the analog stick left. That's this video. Have a look at the next one and we'll start applying this in a much more useful way relative to the camera's direction. Goodbye!